There's no way to sugarcoat this. Our week three cash lineup was a major disappointment. We'll debrief all about that and get you ready for week four with a full cash and GPP lineup. And we're gonna introduce a brand new free contest for our FFC subscribers here on FanDuel, where you can win up to $100. We'll tell you how to qualify for it all coming up next. Hello everyone, I'm Eric Lee with the Fantasy Football Consultants. All right, let's get this over with in week three. Week three, we scored a miserable 102 points and no guys really went off. We like to say who our studs were. I mean, the Tampa Bay defense was good, but this was really a fact that no one did really well in the lineup. And then we were really hurt by three guys, specifically Deontay Johnson, who got hurt early even though Pittsburgh scored a lot of points, he was out of the game and uh, he got less than a point. <laughs> the other two guys, I might want to blame on Bill Belichick. There's Darren Waller, who Bill Belichick obviously knew how to game plan for him, throwing the fact that I think Waller wasn't at 100%, which here's the big lesson for us and what I need to take away. We said in the NFL DFS Masterclass, I just didn't follow it. In cash games, when you have guys that you have any doubt about whether they're 100%, just go elsewhere. Um, the other player was Cam Newton. Oh, Cam, you're so frustrating. So um, he's so frustrating, I am going to put him on the thumbnail. But as an ultimate disrespect, I'm going to put him in a Carolina Panthers uniform. Anyway, but Cam, Cam Newton, who has done so well this year, and the reason we liked him is the floor that he provides with his rushing, specifically around the goal line. Now, we were right in the fact that uh, the Patriots scored a lot of points. They scored 36 points. We were wrong in thinking, thinking that the Raiders would keep it close. Again, see Josh Jacobs and Darren Waller coming off injuries and probably could have, pers uh, could have uh, figured that out, that they weren't going to keep it close. But given their scoring and coming off a really impressive Monday night game, we thought that they could keep it close. They didn't, so mistake number one, the Patriots were playing for a head and they did a lot of running and melting of the clock, which was terrible. But still, they scored 36 points and twice they got inside the five. In their first two games this year, when they got inside the five, this is who were in the lineup. In their backfield were only two people, their fullback who only blocked and Cam Newton, paving a way for him to run. Not so in week three. They, Bill Belichick switched it up, brought in Rex Burkhead, even though Rex Burkhead played in the first two games, but he never was used in the goal line package. He was used twice for short runs uh, on the, the goal line, and thus for, therefore not only did Cam Newton not score a lot of points uh, in the air, he didn't do a whole lot on the ground because he couldn't get in the end zone. So let's forget about week three. Let's just Put, let's crumble up that sheet of paper and throw it away. Let's get ready for week four. But I want to first talk to you guys about how appreciative I am about our FFC community, especially all the support you're doing on this FanDuel videos. Let me just let you know that when Gary stepped away in the offseason and I was going to do these three shows, I was wondering, do I really want to continue FanDuel? Because I was going to do that all by myself. Well, thanks to your guys' support, not only have you made FanDuel the most popular video on our YouTube channel, beating out NFL Survivor Pools and our drafting show, but you just made it one of the more popular FanDuel weekly shows on NFL DFS, period, on YouTube. So I constantly have been thinking over this past week, how can we put on a show that is going to be not only more fun for you guys, but also provide more knowledge so you can have better uh, NFL DFS lineups by bringing in all of you guys in our FFC community with comments. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to introduce a brand new show, a brand new contest, excuse me, where you can win $100, right? So how do you win? How are we going to award the $100? We're going to have two, con two contests on FanDuel. It's very, uh, FanDuel only allows 20 people to participate. So at maximum, there'll be 20 people participating and you'll fill out a full FanDuel lineup. 
Whoever finishes first is going to take home $50. Then we'll run the contest again the following week, where whoever finishes first again wins $50. That's a $100 uh, prize pool. The question is, how can you be one of the only 20 people who will qualify to participate in that, uh, those polls, which will be at the end of the year? You have to qualify, and you qualify by doing the following things. Here it goes. The first thing I would like everyone to do, if you haven't yet, please watch our NFL DFS Masterclass series, at least specifically on our strategy shows. I'll put the link up top. That means looking at the factors to determine for the right quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, and defense. Then step two, each week, I want you to put together your cash game lineup before watching our show. Okay, step three, watch our weekly show, and then you can adjust your lineup from your original lineup based on anything that I say that resonates with you. Step four, enter into the YouTube comment section, your best FanDuel cash play of the week and state the reasons why you feel that way. And then finally, enter your FanDuel username. What I'll do at the end of the week, after all the uh, results are in, I will pick the best call, the best one call, or possibly if there are two really good calls, I'll pick two good calls that particular week. And I will be doing the criteria based on accuracy, like, and reasoning, right? So it's not good enough just to say, I think Fitzpatrick's going to go off. Explain why you think Fitzpatrick's going to go off. And what I think the benefit of that is, is you're going to be able to come back to our YouTube uh, video and review the comment section toward the end of the week and see the different takes that all of our people in the FFC community are saying that might help you make your call uh, in your lineup better. What also I will always do, we'll come back by Saturday to the extent I have any adjustments to the lineup, partially because of late breaking news, maybe even because of some good takes that comes in the YouTube comments, I'll give you my final cash game lineup if there are any changes on Saturday or first thing Sunday morning. So that's the contest. I hope you guys enjoy it and I hope you guys take advantage of it. So go ahead, write it in the YouTube comment, your best fan duel play. So you all right, we're going to start with our cash game lineup, and we're going to start with running back. And my gosh, there's no better place to start than the guy who's been on an absolute tear after three weeks, Alvin Kamara. Let's talk about what his season has been like so far. First, he faced a, one of the toughest run defenses in all of football, Tampa Bay. So don't be discouraged for the 12 of uh, 16 but he still ended up having a good game. Then what happened in week two and week three? Two very important things happened. One, Michael Thomas wasn't playing. And two, the Saints were playing from behind. And Alvin Kamara just went nuts in the passing game. Nine targets against the Raiders and 14 targets against Green Bay. He has... He's just been so explosive, both in the running game and the passing game. And look who he draws this week. He draws the Detroit Lions. So he is in our lineup. Now, I know Michael Thomas may very well be coming back. I don't know, you know, will Michael Thomas um, be at 100%? Will he not be? But you know what? In all scenarios on FanDuel, I want Alvin Kamara in my lineup. You can look so far this year, rush rank of 30, uh, 30th in the rush rank. And of course, Alvin Kamara is also going to get the, a ton of those short dump off passes from um, Drew Brees. All right. What are we going to do? Who are we going to team uh, Alvin Kamara with? Well, Devin Singletary. We get to scroll way down at only at only six thousand dollars. It's not a trap. Well, okay, I admit why you might say it's a trap. You can say it's a trap because when Devin Singletary's in the game, he's competing with not only one person when they get around the goal line, but two people. Uh, first of all, his darn quarterback, Josh Allen. 
five times this year, they've been right at the goal line. And Josh Allen has either run it in himself or he's done a short pass play for a touchdown. So that has limited his upside a little bit. And also uh, Zach Moss. He shares carries with Zach Moss. But here's the neat thing. Well, sorry. Neat for Devin Singletary. Um, Zach Moss had uh, missed last game with a bad toe. And look at uh, the amount of involvement Devin Singletary got. 13 carries for 71 yards, plus five targets, caught four of them for 50 yards. Uh, so, and he had plenty of opportunities to get in the end zone. They were down there so many times. He took the ball down to the one and tried to get in multiple times and faked to him and the whole bit. So I think at only $6,000, he's a great deal. But here's the deal. We are going to be monitoring the Zach Moss situation. If Zach Moss is going to be a go for this game, I'm worried that they're going to, Devin Singletary is going to split carries. And if that's the case, I will pull him out of my cash lineup. And at only $300 more, I'm just going to make it work to get Mike Davis in my lineup. Mike Davis is the replacement for Christian McCaffrey. And in the last game, he did his best Christian McCaffrey impersonation, at least in the passing game. Two straight weeks, he's gotten eight receptions out of the backfield from uh, Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, and he's still the primary uh, featured back in the running game. So given that, and given that he is playing uh, against a Car an Arizona team at home, might I add, that really runs a very fast pace, should be lots of opportunities for Mike Davis. So I'm going to be monitoring that. And that would be my suggestion. If Zach Morris, uh, Zach Morris, <laughs> saved by the bell. If Zach Moss uh, actually, um, that's hilarious. <laughs> if, Zach, if Zach Moss is playing, we're switching to, to Mike Davis. Let's move over into wide receiver. I just said, who's the best running back so far? Well, the best wide receiver is not Michael Thomas, even though FanDuel has him uh, as the highest price. It is, in fact, DeAndre Hopkins. And here's my bold prediction. He's now been bumped up to $8,700 on uh, FanDuel. He is going to get to $10,000 on FanDuel by the next seven or eight weeks. Why? Because the Arizona Cardinals get good matchups after good matchups after good matchups. And I think you're going to see him really perform, which is going to force his price up. So what can you say about him? Uh, the Arizona Cardinals are absolutely making certain that they feature Hopkins in their offense. What do I mean by that? They're just designing specific plays. A lot of them short pass plays to DeAndre Hopkins and just letting him go. So um, the one thing that we have not seen from him is the big touchdown production, mostly because Kyler Murray keeps running the ball in for touchdowns. But look, at, look how well he's performed and he's only gotten one touchdown. I think the touchdown uh, or more could come this week playing in a really nice matchup against the Carolina Panthers, who have proven so far this year that they cannot stop anybody. So I know that he uh, has a questionable tag. We will monitor that. Obviously, if he is, uh, looks like he's going to be diminished, or certainly if he's out, we will pull him from our lineup. All right. At the other wide receiver, I'm going to go to my Seahawks. I'm going to pass Tyler Lockett, as painful as it is to me passing Tyler Lockett, who's one of my favorite Seahawks. Uh, we're, we're going to be able to have the advantage of dropping down $600 from Tyler Lockett to DK Metcalf. OK, here's a couple of things to note about the Seattle Seahawks. I've watched almost every second of every each of their first three games of the year. Um, they're going to be without Chris Carson in this game. So, of course, they will throw Carlos Hyde in there, and they'll throw Travis Homer in there. But those guys are not going to be able to re run as effectively as Chris Carson. And on top of that, I don't think they'll be featured 
in the passing game as much as Chris Carson. So they're going to be more opportunities in this game, once again, for Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. And I believe that the Miami Dolphins playing at home with a pretty healthy uh, squad that has really on a mini buy since they played all the way back uh, on Thursday night the previous week, that they're going to be able to keep it close and, and make the Seahawks continue to have to pass the ball. So there's a lot of discussion of, look how great Tyler Lockett was last week. Well, people forget Metcalf had a pretty darn good game as well. And if Metcalf didn't have that brain lapse uh, at the one yard line, then he would have scored another touchdown and he would not have fumbled. So that would have resulted in six points for the touchdown and, and two points not taken away uh, due to the fumble. He would have scored 25 uh, Fanduel points. And he's been super solid all year, scoring at least 17 points. And Russell Wilson just looks so great. What I really love, if you, if you want to start DK Metcalf, if you watch that game, when Metcalf made that mental blunder, then it wasn't like Russell Wilson lost any confidence in him. He went right over him, slapped him on the head nicely, not me. And he goes right back to him for a, a key touchdown later in the game. All right, so we got DK Metcalf in our lineup. Where do we go from here? Well, I just kind of commented about the fact that I think Miami Dolphins are going to be able to keep the game close. I didn't directly say it, but let's just say it now. The Seahawks actually have a pretty good run defense. What they don't have is a good secondary at all. And on top of that, Jamal Adams may be out. So I'm just going to absolutely uh, dial in Devontae Parker in our lineup. As you can see, the Seahawks, 32nd ranked pass defense. What does that mean? There's only 32 teams in the NFL. It means they're just terrible. And those guys proved last year, Fitzpatrick and Parker, that they have a good rapport. Again, coming off that mini buy, I am really excited to get Devontae Parker at a very reasonable $6,500 into my lineup. All right, we are going to be able to do a little bit of a lay of the land here. And see, we have spent a lot of money, but I am looking at quarterback. And after last week of really bungling the quarterback decision uh, with um, Cam Newton, there's lots of great options. There's nothing wrong with Lamar Jackson. It's just other than his price. You want to pay up the 9,600. Seems pretty steep to me. Um, of course, I like uh, Russell, Russell Wilson. But the guy that I have my eye on at 8,200 is Dak Prescott. Here's the deal. This is one of the highest scoring games on the slate. Dallas has a ridiculously high implied total of 29 points. Now, Dallas has so many weapons in the passing game. They could throw it to any of their star uh, three wide receivers, Michael Gallup. Uh, Cooper, R. C. D. Lamb, right? Uh, they have Schultz as their tight end. They have Zeke out of the backfield. And they even have Cedric Wilson, who came on in the last, uh, last outing. The nice thing about putting Dak Prescott in your lineup, you don't have to worry about what guy goes off out of all those different weapons. All you need to do is have any of those guys go off. They're always will help Dak Prescott. And he's also a danger uh, with his legs including on the goal line, which <laughs> earlier this year, he snaked three short uh, TD rushes on the goal line. And on top of all the things that I said, he faces a Cleveland Brown team, which is better against the run than they are against the pass. I think we're locked and loaded for Dak Prescott this week. Oh, well, hold on. There's going to be more Cowboys to speak of coming. Same game. I, I, I'd like to uh, turn to tight end. And we have to save the money, folks. Now, I was eyeing 
Eric Ebron at 5,100. And I was going to tell you, go with Eric Ebron as long as Deontay Johnson uh, is out. Never mind all that. Uh, the, as we said earlier, that game has been postponed. It's interesting that FanDuel hasn't put a big note saying, hey, don't pick any Steeler or Titan. But we're smart enough not to do that. So um, one option certainly could be Greg Olson. I think he's an intriguing pick uh, in uh, Miami with that really high implied total that the Seahawks have. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Dalton Schultz. Here's the thing with Dalton Schultz. He's really had a good, a, a great year, and he's been a part of this offense. Remember, he was not the starter at the beginning of the year. He, barely, he was the backup in week one. He became the starter after uh, uh, an injury to Jarwin. And he's had one terrific game a, against Atlanta when they were in big comeback mode, and then a good game, uh, a decent game, let's say, against Seattle. I really like this Cowboy offense against Cleveland this week. So at a paltry paltry sum of four thousand nine hundred dollars we're gonna uh dial up schultz i tell you i don't get no respect no respect at all all right in the flex position speaking of getting no respect this guy gets no respect now i may tell you the name <coughs> and you'll say well you know i'm not that excited so don't worry about the name just worry about the facts the facts are he's a featured running back <coughs> The fact is that he gets the goal line carries. The fact is he gets involved in the passing game. And the fact is he plays a defense that can't stop anybody on the ground. So, and the final fact is he's only $6,600. Have you figured out who it is? He's almost the same price on DraftKings, believe it or not. He's only $100 more. So I just think FanDuel has missed the boat on this guy. And the answer is James Robinson. So I already told you the, the reasons why I, I want to pick him. Check out that Cincinnati Bengal rush defense so far this year, 31st out of 32 teams. And, uh, you know, He's really game script proof, although I think this Jacksonville Cincinnati game will be close. But you see that when he played in Miami and they got way down, he didn't get as many carries. But look, six receptions in the passing game and did very well. Where when they were uh, playing uh, either from ahead or close in the Indianapolis game and the Tennessee game, uh, he got a lot of carries. So. We're dialing in James Robinson and happy to do so. Our defense for the week is going to be, I'm sorry, guys. It, 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 it's a theme. Uh, we're going with the Dallas Cowboys. Why? Because we needed to save some money. Um, but there's a couple of things that are as intriguing about the, the, the Cowboy team. Look. When you pay for a bottom basement uh, defense, you don't expect the fact that you're going to get a home favorite. So from a game scripts perspective, I think Dallas, the Cowboys, are going to be ahead in this game, and Cleveland is going to have to be passing a lot trying to catch up. Remember, all um, interceptions, most fumbles, all sacks, all occur in the passing game. So you want a situation where your defense is facing an, uh, an opposing offense who is going to be forced to throw the ball a lot. And I think uh, Mayfield can be prone to some mistakes. They're coming off uh, a game in which they got four sacks uh, against, against Seattle. So again, we're going to take a close look at the Devin Singletary situation um, with Zach Moss. And if he plays, we're probably going to be pivoting to Mike Davis. Let's take a look at our GPP lineup. For GPP, we always start with a stack, although I did something a little bit different this week. Normally, we want to stack in a very high over and under game. 
where we think it's going to be a shootout. And that has worked really well, you know, picking uh, uh, basically <laughs> Russell Wilson and one of his wide receivers and then someone going back on that. I did consider that, and I also considered attacking the Dallas-Cleveland game, and I have no problems if you decide to go that route. I'm going to go with a contrarian stack in a lower-scoring game, the Tampa Bay and the L.A. Charger game. But here's why I really like this stack. I think in this game, it could be high scoring. And there are very few good options where I think the scoring is going to occur. So Justin Herbert, look, he's had two games and two games he's thrown for over 300 yards. And he plays a Tampa Bay team that is much better against the run than the pass. So I think any success that the Chargers have is going to come in the passing game. And who is it? Mike Williams is even questionable whether he's going to play. And by far, his favorite target is Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen, for God's sakes, got 19 targets from just Justin Herbert last week. So in coming back the other way, Mike Evans of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, first of all, who's left that's healthy in, uh, for Tom Brady to throw to on Tampa Bay. Chris Godwin is doubtful to play. Looked like Scotty Miller would be a good sneaky play at a lower cost I was looking at, but now he's hurt and he's questionable to play. Justin Watson is questionable to play. So I am going to go uh, with Mike Evans as the clear target of Tom Brady in the passing game. All right, uh, where do we go from here? I want to attack the New England Kansas City game. Here's the thing that you have to remember when you're thinking about that New England offense, right? What New England wants to do is they want to get up ahead and then they want to play a very slow game and melt the clock with running the ball with like a Rex Burkett or a Sonny Michelle or with a Cam Newton. But, but they can't do that if they fall behind and they're playing at Kansas City. Uh, the story that I'm telling with this GBB lineup is Kansas City is going to roll up on roll the points up and, and the game script is going to be New England is going to have to pass. So what is that going to look like of the three games that New England played so far? It's going to look like the Seattle game. And if it looks like the Seattle game, we are a OK with Julian Edelman, who uh, went absolutely bonkers against uh, against Seattle, even without scoring a touchdown. So. Um, there's Julian Edelman. Uh, at the tight end spot, we're going with Greg Olson. We love the implied total that the Seahawks have, like uh, somewhere around 30. And Wilson likes, especially when he gets closer to the, the goal line, he likes throwing to his tight end. And he is starting to develop a rapport with Greg Olson, who is still, he's a grizzled old veteran, but he still uh, has a lot of talent, Greg Olson does. And how about Dalvin Cook in what is, again, another a good matchup for Dalvin Cook playing a Houston team that doesn't do a good job of defending the run. So um, Dalvin Cook, Kamara and Cook are just two guys that we hope will be able to carry this GPP lineup. And then finally, the Minnesota Vikings defense. So when you're doing a GPP lineup, you're looking for correlation. And one correlation out there is that uh, play the running back with his own defense. And I know Minnesota is on the road, but they are playing a Houston team who is winless this year. They're 0-3. Granted, they played a tough schedule, but they are 0-3. It is conceivable that Minnesota will beat Houston or at least stay ahead of them and have a game script where they're continuing to feed Dalvin Cook and the defense can pin their ears back uh, against um, Watson. All right, so that is my GPP lineup. If you made it this far in this video, please smash the like button. We'll put a whole bunch of videos on the screen. We have a DraftKings video. When that is available, I'll put that on the screen as well as our NFL Survivor Week 4 show. All right, everybody, please take care, be safe, and we'll see you next time for a very special show. It's going to be a big surprise. I'm going to do something special. Until then, see you next time.